tactical to practical. Developed for tactical advantage. Declassified for practical use. Tactical. MedTech. Enabling warfighters to get back into action. Our mission is to get soldiers back to the way they were before they were amputees. Practical. MedTech. Empowering athletes to get back in the race. Amputees must relearn how to run after they lose a limb. That's much more difficult than the average person realizes. Tactical. Med tech. Empowering soldiers who've lost limbs to get back to the fight. I forget that I'm an amputee about 90% of the day. Practical. Med tech. Putting disabled athletes back on track. Pretty soon, amputees will have such great technology. Be running faster than able buddy. Today, if someone loses a limb, a new generation of prosthetic devices lets them chase almost any dream. From climbing mountains, to being a pro skateboarder, to being one of the fastest human beings in the world. What's more, artificial limbs may soon be thought controlled. 150 years ago, if you happened to lose a limb and were lucky enough to survive, you'd probably have to stand on something like this. But times have changed, and the journey from the peg leg to today's high-tech prosthetic devices has been heavily influenced by the military. If you look in, through history, most of the prosthetic developments have always taken place after or during a war. You have so many injured soldiers coming back, each government feels responsible for taking care of those injured soldiers. 1862. The Civil War is producing what will ultimately be 30,000 amputees on the Union side alone. President Lincoln commits the U.S. government to pay for their prostheses for life. By 1917, over 200 firms are developing improved artificial limbs. Prostheses up until that time could weigh as much as 17 pounds. For the first time, we saw a prosthesis that weighed less than five pounds. 1945. By the end of World War II, there are about 15,000 U.S. military amputees. The Army Surgeon General spearheads the largest wave of prosthetic development in history. For the first time, a socket could be held on by suction. The prosthetics were much lighter. The prosthetic knees were much more responsive. And the prosthetic feet acted like the normal anatomical foot. More than 130 American soldiers have lost their limbs during recent military operations in Afghanistan and Iraq. Most come for treatment to Walter Reed Army Medical Center in Washington, D.C. Well, our mission is to get soldiers back to the way they were before they were amputees. The best news is that they get the highest technology here and will work day and night until we can get them up and going. One of those soldiers is First Lieutenant Melissa Stockwell, who lost a leg while on a convoy in Iraq. I was in the back seat of a Humvee, and we drove under a bridge, and an IED went off, a roadside bomb. My leg and the boot came off immediately, and then uh, they'd amputate. Within three months of her injury, Stockwell is learning to use a microprocessor-equipped sea leg, which cost an average of about $50,000. I can now walk without crutches or a cane, which was like the biggest biggest step in the world. I was so excited. Made by a company called Autobach, Sealeg is known for its stumble control. A microprocessor in its knee takes readings 50 times a second to adjust the knee's action through hydraulics. Tension is increased as the step begins, then released for free swinging when the step is done. Before the Sealeg, it was easy to lose balance, especially going downhill. Now, patients can go downhill more easily and down steps foot over foot instead of planting both feet on each step. If I can't have my own leg back, it's the best leg I can have. As the sea legs use spreads, it becomes key in helping one amputee make a dramatic life-saving escape. Curtis Grimsley once worked in the North Tower of the World Trade Center. He's in the building on September 11, 2001, when the hijacked airliner hits. Using his sea leg, Grimsley walks down 70 flights of stairs and gets out of the building before it collapses. We was in double, double lines going down the stairwell. And um, someone was in front of me, someone was in back of me. And I was able to keep up with the pace. 
the sea leg stability in going downstairs is key to getting Grimsley out in time. Back at Walter Reed, technology and camaraderie are helping a number of military amputees return to active duty. One is Lieutenant Colonel Andrew Lurake. We're military people, we're soldiers, we're, we're warriors. It takes a special breed and just because you get injured doesn't necessarily mean that um, you're not one anymore. A few years after losing his leg in a motorcycle accident, Lou Rake has become the first above-knee amputee recertified to fly for the U.S. Air Force. It feels awesome. This is almost solidifies that uh, I'm back to right where I was before the accident happened. Today, Lou Rake volunteers his time to help soldiers cope with the loss of a limb. Lieutenant Colonel Lou Rake is a huge influence on everybody. And you come in, you've lost a leg, you've lost an arm, you just need to hear that it's going to be okay. He gives hope to a lot of people. Soldier amputees at Walter Reed are benefiting from the advanced technology found in the Utah arm and an attached sensor hand. It's lifelike. I mean, if I had a short sleeve shirt on, you couldn't tell that I was, you know, missing my arm. Electrodes on Pedraza's upper arm read his muscles. When he flexes his bicep, his hand opens. When he flexes his tricep, it closes. By flexing both muscles, his hand turns. It's unbelievable. It's, it's almost as if I never, you know, lost my arm. The Utah arm is made with the same carbon composites that make the Air Force's SR-71 Blackbird light and fast. Carbon composites are also used to make a new breed of custom sports prosthetics, powering athletes like these. One frustrated amputee made all of this possible. I remember saying uh, to people, God, they send men to the moon, and, you know, this is what I have to wear, this piece, you know, this uh, $40 is what a satch foot cost, a wood foot. $40, that's what my foot's worth, $40. After losing his foot in a 1976 water skiing accident, athlete Van Phillips experiments with new aerospace materials and creates the Flex Foot, which goes to market in 1984. Operating basically like a pogo stick, the Flex Foot absorbs energy in a pure vertical mode. Van Phillips, for the first time, looked at not storing energy just in the front of the foot, but all the way up to the knee. This way, you should get maximum energy return out of the foot. 2003. While wearing the flex foot, Marlon Shirley sets the 100-meter world record for amputees at 10.97 seconds, about a second shy of the overall world record. The difference is Marlon Shirley requires 75% more power to be produced from this intact limb to compensate for the lack of his foot on the amputated side. Just imagine what he would be able to accomplish if he had both limbs producing that amount of power. Flexfoot's ability to store and release energy opens up all kinds of activities to amputees around the world.